Okay, so this is a tutorial on loops. So there are two types of loops in Java. There are the for loop and the while loop. So in this function, we are running both of them just to show what they do. Um, so this while loop here, uh, this while loop here um, has a condition that it'll only run while z is less than 100. So z is made here to be 2. Um, and z in here has x and y added onto it. So these x and y values are the ones that were given into the function. Um, so the way it works is every time it runs all the code inside of it, which can be as long as you need it to be, it will then check if the condition here is met, and if it is, then it will cancel out of it. So if it's not met anymore, the while loops check if the condition is no longer met. Right, so if the condition, so if z is no longer less than 100, then it cancels out of it. So z here, as I said before, is 2. So every time this line of code is run, z will plus 5, because 3 here plus the 2 here is 5. Right, so z plus 5 is 7, so we'll keep going through and through and through until it hits above 100. When it does, it breaks out, and then it'll carry on with the code. So the next part in the code is the for loop. So... A for loop has three main aspects of it to make it a for loop. So what it has is it has a identifier here. So it has a new variable. So if I wanted to make it not z anymore, I could make it i. i is less than 100. And we'll make it a generic one. Okay. So at the end of every loop, so this basically, if you read it from left to right, it creates a new variable called i, which can be used inside of the loop. And then it has the same while loop thing here. So as long as i is less than 100, you run the code. And this here is at the end of every loop cycle, what do you want it to do? Okay, so at the end of every loop it goes through, it'll increment, meaning adding i, to 1. So you could also do it like this, so i++, plus plus, that's the same thing. So at the end of every loop it hits 1. So every time it goes through, it goes through in that order, so it checks it. So if it's still less than 100, then we go through here again. If it's suddenly hit 100, then we just cancel out of the loop. So the difference between a for loop and a while loop is that a while loop will keep checking as long as this condition is not met. Is met, sorry, is met. As long as this condition is met, it will keep checking. A for loop usually has a set um, number of times it will check, which can vary depending on whether or not you're using hard-coded data like 100, or if you're using the length of an array, for example. It will vary, but it will always be only a certain number of times, whereas a while loop, the condition might not be met for like any number of times, you know? So it'll always change. So the best way to look at it, at it is um, a for loop has a is incremental, whereas a while loop is just run until the condition is no longer met. Okay, so um, that should be all you need to know about loops for now. Um, oh, um, also, if you wanted to cancel out of it early, so if a different condition is met, you could say if um, say say um, if z is less than twenty after that first addition and you want it to break out or cancel, you say break. That's a, it breaks out of just this while loop. Just this one. So it's called, um, you can think of it like breaking the braces, so breaking out of it, like canceling out of this. Everything that's happened has already happened, so z will already, will still be equal to whatever it was in that loop, but you'll no longer be looping through, okay? So you can do the same thing in a for loop, so if you wanted to do the same thing here for the for loop, you could do that. Same thing, it would break out of the loop, and everything that happened before will still have happened, but anything further on will no longer be run because the loop has been broken out of. If you break out of this while loop, it will then start the for loop. So all it does is it cancels your loop and keeps you moving down in a list of what you're doing. Okay? So there's also another version of the for loop um, called the for each loop. Uh, I'm not sure if Java has a proper way of doing it. Ah, oh, yep, they do. Okay. So, what it is, is it's four, and then you have a 
Um, it's only used for arrays, by the way. So I'll go back a bit. So I'll say I'm having array integers. Ten integers. So I want to do something for each of those integers. It could. Um, it's useful because it can. Doesn't matter how many there are in it. It will do it for every single object in the array. So for each of the integers in the array, I want to do whatever's in here. Right. So you say each of the integers uh, in the array will be called i, and then inside here I want to say. Um, So uh, I want to do system dot out dot print line i. Okay, so this will print out each of those in the in the, in the array. Sorry. So this is very useful for um, quickly going through things, especially when you have an array of objects. You can use it to go through the array of objects and make sure that each of the objects, or to manipulate each of the objects to do a certain thing. So if they had special properties inside of them, you could access their, um, if it, say if it was a, um, so you had a weapon, you had different damage on it, you could access the damage of each of the weapons and they'd be different for each of them. But because you have this loop, you can go through um, each of the weapons and get all the damages you need. Okay, so it's similar to the for loop, but you don't get that variable. So if you needed to have their index, array index of where it actually is, you wouldn't have that. All you have is the direct access to the object itself. So it's situational where you wish to use each of them, but I find myself using for loops more when I need to access the object itself, and I sorry for for each loops, and I use for loops when I need uh, to find out uh, maybe the index of where it is depending on certain parameters, and I don't really personally use while loops much. <laughs>